When I was on Discord the other day, I noticed that someone had made a level that was inspired by an old level that I had, but what they did is they just made it a bit harder. They had three different sets of cars that each set had all the cars moved together in that set. But there was only enough roads for one set at a time, so what you'd do is you'd have one set of cars go, and then you'd have to move all the roads to line up for the next set, and then you'd have to move it again for the third set, and then you'd have to move it all back. The reason this is a lot harder than just moving for two different sets is that with two sets you can just have an arm that rotates back and forth, you can move it down and then move it up, but when you have three different states you need to have two sets of arms. One arm moves it down and then it switches off arms, one arm lets go, and then the other arms grab it and then move it down, and then you need to move it back up, switch arms again, and then lift it up. So it's a lot more complicated because you need to have a switching mechanism and you need to move two sets of arms. I give myself a few self-imposed challenges when trying to solve this, one of which would be that the bridge is symmetrical, meaning both sides are the same. And the reason I did this is because it looks so much nicer when the bridge is symmetrical versus not symmetrical. And the second challenge I gave myself was to not use any counterweight mechanisms to make it so that the bridge would lift up easier, because those just look really unclean, and I'm going for a very clean design in this video. After putting in all the roads, I started off by putting a grasshopper linkage in the middle, which would allow for me to have symmetrical rotation at the beginning. And I would connect this later up to all of the different arms to get all the rotations that I needed. After this, I actually started by making the second set of arms that would rotate from the second position into the third position, because I thought that it would be a lot easier to try to make this be at the beginning than waiting until there's a whole bunch of stuff already built and trying to figure out how to get everything to work. So I thought it would be easier to make the first set of arms later when there's a lot of stuff than to make the second set of arms when there's a lot of stuff. After making these arms, I had to make the first set of arms, and this whole time I was being very intentional about avoiding a common mistake that I normally make, which is connecting things too far away from the original pulling point. So I would chain a whole bunch of movements to each other, and they would end up losing their lift, and then they'd sag down and not be able to connect together. So what I did was I everything I could connect to the actual hydraulic mechanism, I would so that it wouldn't have as much pull down and it would be able to click a lot nicer. Because in a design like this, if you're not having the stuff clicking in like consistently, it's very hard for it to actually function well because there's so much swapping of arms that all need to click into place. The next step that I had was to configure the hydraulic controller. So I had both sets of arms moving back and forth every time. So the hydraulic controller would tell it which sets of arms would let go at which times and which ones would grab at which times, which allowed me to control the movement between the three states. One of the problems I had when I was setting this up was that it was very hard to set them all up because there were so many different points and so many different phases that I had to worry about, but I eventually got through that. And the next problem I had was that the arm, when it's moving slow enough, it would actually click into the wrong joint and then it would break because it's like I should keep moving but it's clicked into something which means it can't move. So that was a problem. The way I ended up solving it was by moving the point that it was supposed to click into so that it wouldn't pass through the other point during its motion and then that fixed the problem. After this I had a very mysterious problem which was that everything would work fine until the very last stage and then it would all tear itself apart. I checked all of the split joints for that stage and I couldn't find anything wrong with it. It turned out the problem had to do with me having arms that attached to static joints because they'll mess up three-way split joints that you have set up. So the solution to this was to move all the joints that would attach to a static joint so that their motion would be shifted over and they'd grab onto a different part of the road that didn't attach to the static joint. But this was actually pretty difficult to do because I lost track of what all the different arms are for. So it took me quite a while to figure out how to do this. But once I finished it, my bridge was all done. So here are two clips of the final design. I hope you enjoyed my video, and if you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.